Welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us for the first Cook with OC program of 2024. Before we begin today's webinar, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our offices located in Toronto are on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. My name is Tracy Napoli, and I'm the Director of Fund Development and Marcom at Osteoporosis Canada, and I will be your host for today. We would like to thank the Winnipeg Foundation for their partnership with this cooking demo. This cooking demo will provide general information about cooking and food knowledge, and it's not intended as individualized health or nutrition advice. But if you have a question about nutrition, please consult a physician or a registered dietitian. Now, during the webinar, we want to hear from you. So if you have a question or comment, you can click the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and enter it there. Alternatively, you can also put a question in the chat. We will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the webinar within the time available. Now, nutrition is a key component for strong and healthy bones. Calcium, vitamin D, protein, magnesium, and vitamin K are all nutrients needed for bone health. Today's recipe features shrimp, and fish and shellfish are considered an excellent source of high quality protein, and fish is one of the best food sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Some fish naturally contain vitamin D, and they play an important role in the body's use of calcium, a mineral required for strong and healthy bones. Fish and shellfish also contribute valuable minerals to the diet, such as selenium, iodine, magnesium, iron, and copper, which the body requires for diverse functions such as growth, repair, and proper functioning. So as I said, today's featured recipe has shrimp and we're making a Thai shrimp satay noodle salad. And did you know one serving of cooked shrimp has 17 grams of protein, 68 milligrams of calcium, 28 milligrams of magnesium, and three international units of vitamin D. So you can get the recipe for this. The serving, uh, per serving, we have 175 milligrams of calcium of this dish and 21 grams of protein. This recipe, along with all the others, are available on the Osteoporosis Canada website at osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes. I will also pop the recipe link into the chat once we begin. So let's get started. And it's my pleasure to introduce our friend, Emily Richards, who is a professional home economist, freelance food writer, chef, and the author and co-author of 11 cookbooks. Emily also writes and develops recipes for print and online publications that can include everyday cooking and healthy eating and can be found on TV, radio, and webcasts, just like this one. So please welcome Emily and all our cook-along participants today. Thanks, Tracy. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody in Winnipeg. How you guys doing? Thumbs up. All good. <laughs> We're cooking tonight, um, and I'm happy to be cooking tonight. This is um, one of my favorite dishes. Um, so it'll be, um, and we haven't cooked uh, seafood in a while, Tracy, so it's nice to uh, to kind of do that. And I think that everyone um, will enjoy this recipe, whether they're going to use shrimp or not. So I think it's, I think it's a great one. Are we doing a giveaway today, Tracy? We are. And you know what? I just want to say that last cooking demo, um, I forgot to announce the apron winner. And I had some people email me after to tell me that we forgot. And so I did, of course, if you were on that one, you know that I emailed everyone to congratulate the winner. But yes, the lovely apron that Emily is wearing and all our cook along folks. Um, if you're on at the end of the uh, cooking demo, if you're watching, I will draw a name and then we will contact you and ship you out that, that lovely apron. So there awesome. we go. And, and also just as an FYI, we are recording this. So if you're, if you're worried and you want to watch it again, don't worry. We will be sending out the recorded link tomorrow. Perfect. Yes. All right. So I love this recipe, a couple reasons. I love shrimp, but also it's fairly quick to make. We um, sometimes think about fish and seafood as 
you know, something that, well, it could be daunting, but it's a great weeknight meal because it cooks so quickly, um, tastes great, and it takes on a lot of flavor. And this one, we're um, inspired by Thai flavors. So we're going to be using some red Thai curry paste um, and creating a wonderful salad and, a, and kind of a little bit of a riff on a, on a peanut sauce. We're going to be using almond butter and almonds. So um, getting the benefit of changing it up. Okay. So, and as Tracy said, if you have questions, um, please feel free to ask. Uh, we'll try to answer them. And um, we'll also keep an, an eye on all our cook along friends at home to make sure that they're kind of working together. So what I always do is I have the recipe in front of me um, because I tend to forget things, even though I've made the salad <laughs> many, many times, um, it's always good to have the recipe. Um, but I also have all of you accountable for me. So make sure that I get all the ingredients in. So we are gonna start off with the vegetables. One of the things um, we kind of talk about is you know food safety and kitchen safety and just um, overall being happy in the kitchen. So we wanna keep um, everything neat and tidy to an extent um, as best we can, but also think about um, the fact that we do have seafood and we're gonna kind of save that till we get all of our vegetables done. And we kind of approach that, I approach that with every recipe. So we'll start with all our vegetables first and um, we can even get our dressing ready and then kind of um, move on to the seafood. But really the vegetables add color, crunch, um, and absolute deliciousness to this recipe. So for those of you that are cooking at home, if you have a pot um, of water on, um, you can turn it on so that it's kind of ready. Um, that typically takes the longest time is to get that pot of water to boil. So I'm gonna turn mine on um, so that it, it's already kind of boiled once, but it does take a little bit of time. And while that's happening, we're gonna get our vegetables ready. So we have a red pepper, green onion, carrots, um, as well as some garlic that are, is going into this recipe. So I'm gonna start off with the carrot because I need to shred the carrot. And I'm just using my um, cheese grater. And believe it or not, I'm sure some of you have been into the grocery store a few times. I've already been in the grocery store, let's see, it's Thursday. I've been in the grocery store four times this week. Um, <laughs> and I don't mind. Um, that just means that I get to um, be cooking many different things. You can actually buy shredded carrots. Um, and oftentimes, if you get um, ahead of yourself, and pick up a bag of carrots that are on sale, you can actually grate a few of them and leave them in the fridge. And they're great to just grab and add into soups and salads so that you have them kind of at the ready so you don't have to grate them at the last minute. Or you can just pick a bag of the shredded carrots up. So we only need about a third of a cup, but in this case, if you shred the whole carrot and it's half a cup or even a cup, it's really not going to make any problem in this recipe. So one of the things that I love about salads is that you can kind of be a little bit free um, with adding some extra ingredients. So I have my carrot grated and we'll just set that aside for a little moment. Okay. And then this little bit I'm going to snack on. That's what I love about carrots too. They're easy to snack on. Okay. So then we're going to get our red pepper and we're going to cut our red pepper. I need my so there's a few different ways to cut peppers. I like to do it kind of the safe way where it's not rolling around. So, um, and I also wanna use as much of the pepper as I can. So I'm gonna cut, start by cutting off the top where the stem is, okay? So I have this lovely little ring of pepper in the stem, which I don't need. And then I'm going to, now I can kind of see the four sides of the pepper. And I'm just gonna cut around those sides and one of the main reasons why I'm doing this is also to keep all these seeds together so I don't have them all over my cutting board. And then I'm just gonna cut the bottom off, okay? So that can go into the compost and I don't have pepper seeds all over the place. And what we're gonna do is thinly slice our pepper, okay? Now I'm using red pepper. It adds lots of color. It tends to be a little bit sweeter than some of the other peppers but you could always use whatever type of pepper you have at home, okay? You could actually add a little bit of hot pepper to this too if you wanted. If you had a jalapeno pepper or um, even a banana pepper would be really nice just to kind of spice things up. We are using red Thai curry paste, which isn't super, super spicy, the amount that we're using. So you can always add some spice after the fact or with using ingredients like 
spicier peppers, okay? So all the pepper pieces are nice and flat. So as I'm cutting them, they're not rolling around. They're not going anywhere. And I'm trying to kind of keep everything the same size. Okay, so holding them in place and then just moving my knife up and down to get those nice long strips. Okay, there. Now, I do have, we need a large bowl. You're going to need a large bowl to toss everything together. So you might as well start adding everything in there. That's dishes for later. So I'm going to add my red pepper in there. And we can serve it right out of this bowl. So if you have a serving bowl that you want to use, you can even just use that, okay? And then I'm going to add that carrot that I grated in with my red pepper as well. And at any point, cook along friends, if I'm going too fast, let me know. <laughs> so that um, it's not a race. All right. So we're going to continue on our chopping bonanza here. And I'm just going to move that um, ingredients out of the way. And I'm going to slice up my green onion. Now, if you love green onion, I've only called for one green onion here, but you could use two or three. It's totally up to you. Um, I just like having that little bit of onion flavor, not too strong. And what I'm going to do is cut the green onion in half crosswise and then just slice nice thin slices of the green onion. And I do it on a slight angle. Really because I, when working in restaurants, you want to have that nice little sharp edge to make it look pretty. So it's just a habit that I've gotten into and I do it for all the recipes as well. And it looks really pretty. So you can also save some for garnish at the end if you want. Okay. And then that's going to go right into our veggie mixture with the red onion, sorry, red pepper and carrot. Although red onion would be great in here too. For those of you that are red onion lovers, totally would work in here as well. Now, this is one of my favorite convenience items that I use often, and I always try to have a bag in my refrigerator in the crisper, and that's coleslaw mix, okay? It's just cabbage, red and green, with a little bit of carrot. So if you didn't have coleslaw, but you did have some cabbage lurking in the crisper, this would be a great place to use it. And we're gonna use two cups of this coleslaw mix to kind of give us a nice little bit of crunch and texture to the salad. This is also fabulous to add into stir fries or soups, um, really anything outside of just coleslaw. So it's a, it's a fabulous little convenience item and you will have some left over from this bag because we only need a couple of cups. So I'm gonna measure out, I'm just using my dry measuring cup here and I'm gonna measure two cups. You can kind of pack it in right on top there, and then add that in with our veggies as well, okay? Now, if same would apply if you had red cabbage or Napa cabbage, you could use any cabbage here. Um, that would be really nice, and it really does provide a nice little crunch and texture to the salad. I'm gonna measure up my second cup, okay? There we are, and that goes in too. So if any of you have any plans on watching football this weekend and you need, let's say you're making pulled pork sliders and you need some coleslaw, you now have some in the fridge. <laughs> so you are, are ready for the games. Or Emily, how about our new recipe for a carne asada sandwich? Did we use coleslaw on that? I can't even remember. No, but you could throw it on top. It's oh yeah, like, you totally could. It's on the yeah. website. It's the featured recipe. And it perfect, right? For Oh, it would be for sure. Without and having you, to chop a lot and Well, that's the idea, right? To kind of make it speedy. Now, obviously, it's gonna take us longer because I'm talking through everything, but if you were just making this recipe at home without listening to me and you know, and Tracy and having all this back and forth, it's a very quick recipe. And that's what I love about fish and seafood because it cooks so quickly um, and it takes on a bunch of flavor. So yes, for sure. Um, the other thing is that you could do like a quick little kimchi with this too. If you wanted something a bit spicier, you could add some hot pepper flakes, a little sugar, a little bit of vinegar and do like a quick little pickle. And that would be absolutely delicious too. So lots of reasons why you should have either cabbage or coleslaw in your refrigerator. My pot's just coming to the boil. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. 
and get a little bit of a steam bath going on here too. All right, so we have that. We're also going to add our edamame into this bowl. So this is, um, these are frozen edamame pods, um, the inside. So these are soybeans and you usually get them frozen. They can be in their pod or they can be shelled. So these were shelled and it's a good idea if you're not cooking them in something to cook them first. So you can either put them in a pot of boiling water for about three or four minutes or you can put them with some water in the microwave. In our case, we want to do that because we're just adding it into um, the, uh, the salad. And this is a great plant-based protein that we often, you know, think of when you hear of soy. Um, and this is just a great snack. I love these. I cook them up and then my son loves them with a little extra salt on them, but I literally just eat them by the handful after they come out. And we need half a cup um, in our recipe. And again, if you cooked up a little extra, you can add a little extra. Okay, so I'm going to add our half a cup of cooked edamame uh, beans in there as well. And let's think outside the box. If you didn't have edamame for this recipe, but you had some leftover cannellini beans or romano beans, kidney beans, you could totally add those in here too, because that's going to add a little bit of protein that, you know, just to bump it up, which is never a bad thing. Um, I have some extra because I knew that my son wanted some. So I'm going to set them over there and he may come over and grab them at some point for a snack. Um, he's very excited about having this for dinner. <laughs> All right, so I'm going through to make sure that we have, oh, my favorite, fresh herbs. So we're gonna cut up our fresh herbs and garlic, and then I think we'll start to, maybe we'll cook the noodles next. Is everyone kind of okay with all the vegetables that we've been working on? Everyone's kind of happily working. I don't see any frowns, which is awesome. I see I'm just serious. looking at everyone. I see lots of thumbs up, Emily. Okay, perfect. Do we have any questions, Tracy? I yeah, like now's a good time to ask for, for um, our friends that are cooking, are we all good? Anyone's got some questions? No, I don't see any so far. Everyone okay, awesome. Good. Awesome, awesome. All right, so I'm just looking through because I want to make sure that I have everything. Okay, so we're going to, let's chop the cilantro. And if you have a bowl that you're going to put your um, shrimp in, or maybe you already have your shrimp in a bowl, like I do right here, um, you can actually keep it close by because we're going to put some of that cilantro in there. Okay? So I have my cilantro um, rolled up here. I've washed it, um, patted it dry, and then I have it in some paper towel. And this is kind of how I keep it so that it lasts a little bit longer in the crisper. Cilantro is one of those really delicate herbs that um, doesn't stick around too long. So you get this beautiful big bunch, and then if you don't know what to do with it, you, I always recommend you wash it um, and clean it, pat it dry and keep it clean in the fridge so that you can take it out and use it. You don't have to worry about washing it every time. Um, and then what I look for when I open up that um, paper towel is if any of these leaves of cilantro are starting to darken. And if this paper toweling is really wet, I switch it out and put some dry paper toweling because we don't want this to be too moist and wet because that will deteriorate the herbs. That's what makes them kind of black and slimy, okay? And we definitely don't want that. We don't need very much in this recipe, but again, if you're a cilantro lover, you can always add more. And I always know that there's cilantro dislikers <laughs> in the audience. So not to worry, we got you covered. You can use basil or mint in here too. We really want a nice fragrant herb and basil and mint work really well. Um, outside of the cilantro. Or if you have a little bit of everything, you could just add all of them in together and that would be absolutely delicious, okay? So we need about a quarter of a cup. So again, you're gonna have to guess this one because you know, you're know you using these whole leaves. So I'm gonna just take out maybe about half of this. And if you chop a little extra, that's totally okay, all right? So I like to use the main kind of de more delicate stems Okay, like that, but I don't want to use these thicker stems. These are great though if you love making fish broth or vegetable broth and you want a nice little fresh flavor. Um, cilantro leaf stems are great. You can also steam your fish on the cilantro stems, which is really, really nice. If you chop them up really fine, you can totally add them in as well. But I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and faster by just taking those thicker stems off and using these fine stems, okay? 
And then we're just going to start chopping. So you want to have them in a nice little pile, kind of keep them cinched together. And we're going to chop up the cilantro. So I'm going to just kind of create this little bit of almost like a, a log of cilantro leaves. And then with my knife, I'm holding everything nice and tight and then just moving my knife up and down so that I'm getting a nice even chop. Okay. And then I'm going to go over it just a couple more times. We want this to be kind of a small chop. It doesn't have to be super fine. Like it doesn't have to be like a paste, but we want it to be small enough so that it coats the shrimp nicely. And then we also use it as a bit of a garnish for our salad. Okay. So I'm going to take about a tablespoon of my cilantro. I think it's a tablespoon, it is. And we're going to add that into the shrimp bowl. So if you have a bowl with your fresh shrimp in it, your thawed shrimp, then you can add your cilantro right in there, okay? And then I'm just going to move my cilantro the rest of it over to my cut, the other side of my cutting board, because I'm going to keep that for later. All right, before we put our knives away, let's do our garlic. So the garlic we actually need for our dressing. Um, and this is where some people, not always a fan of raw garlic, and I get it, that's okay. Um, so if you are that fan, not fan of raw garlic, you can still mince it and then just, you could steam it a little bit in the microwave or you could saute it in a little bit of oil and then add it to the dressing. It just kind of takes away some of that rawness. Um, we're gonna mince it, but if you want, you can also use a rasp or a microplane, okay? To get a really, really fine garlic, almost like a paste. Um, and that's okay too, if you wanna do it that way. I find that it can be a little bit stronger that way um, because it's more of a pureed garlic, but. I'm giving you the option, okay? But I'm going to uh, mince up this little clove of garlic and I'll show you how to mince it. Um, so I've peeled my little clove of garlic and I've left the root end on, okay? And I'm just going to make some lengthwise cuts, but still keeping it together. So working through and then flipping it over and doing the exact same thing, making the lengthwise cuts just like that, I'm holding it between my thumb and my finger, and then I'm just going to do small little cuts up and down to get a mince and holding on to that root end of the garlic. As close as you can get to that root end, okay? And then if you wanna make it a little bit smaller, just go back and forth with your knife to get it a little bit smaller, there. Now, what really helps is if you have a nice sharp knife, that tends to make things a little bit easier in the kitchen. Um, so if you are an avid cook and you love cooking, um, try to keep your knives sharp. So I always recommend if there's like a cookware shop somewhere that does knife sharpening and things like that, find out where they are, make good friends with them and have your knife sharpened because it makes this part of cooking in the kitchen so much easier. Okay, so this is gonna be for our dressing. So I'm gonna get my dressing bowl and put my garlic in there. And then I think we are officially done chopping, okay? So hopefully I didn't lose anybody on the way, but I think we're officially done chopping. All right, I'm gonna just look and see. Yes, I believe we are. All right, so let's start, if we're all at the same page, Let's start, because I'm hoping that everybody's water's boiled or boiling, um, and we can cook our noodles, because I want to talk about our noodles. This is, okay, technically it's gluten-free, but you still have to look at the ingredients to make sure that they're gluten-free. Not all soy sauce is gluten-free, for example. You could use a tamari, a gluten-free tamari, or a gluten-free soy sauce. But check the ingredients to make sure. So if you are making this for gluten-free family members, that you are kind of covering all your bases. We are using rice noodles, um, and oftentimes you'll see them as rice stick um, or pad thai noodles. So we are using, um, they're not the wide noodles, which you can. I just find that these kind of smaller ones work better for the salad. You get a little bit more flavor and you get a little more noodle. Um, but whatever you have at home, 
will totally work. If you have the really, really fine vermicelli, those get a little bit tangled up. So they can become a little bit trickier in the salad. Um, but tonight we're using the pad thai noodles, which um, are one of my favorites. So you'll notice that we didn't add any water, or sorry, we added lots of water to the pot. We didn't add any salt. Um, and you don't need to because we are going to be adding um, soy sauce and all the other ingredients. So we really don't need the flavor um, going into the noodles themselves because it's going to absorb the salad dressing that we're putting on. So if you are good to go, you can put your noodles into the pot of water. I had turned mine off and of course it stopped boiling, but I know it's good and hot, so I will put them in. Now here's where it can get a little tricky because these noodles are long. So if you dare, <laughs> it depends on how they come out of the package, um, you can kind of break them up a little bit or we can cut them later, okay? So they might be long or they might be in a square and as they open up, you may see they, they'll get longer. So what we'll do is we'll look at them after they've opened up. And if they're still really long, we'll just use some scissors and cut them, okay? Or you can, if you feel comfortable, you can break them. But those squares, they can be a little bit tricky to break. So I would maybe wait <laughs> and we'll cut them. I'm gonna break some of these though, mainly because they go all over the place and then I'll just put some of them in. So rice noodles are great because they don't take very long. Um, and I keep them in my pantry just as I would any other pasta or noodle uh, because they make great salads, they're great in soups. They're also great if you like making spring rolls to add a few inside. So they have lots of lots of versatility. Okay, I'm gonna get some tongs actually to stir that around. And they only take about two or three minutes so do keep an eye on them, but we want them to be tender. So I still recommend that you taste it. So you, when you take a bite into it, um, think of it just like pasta. You want it to have tenderness, but still be firm. We definitely don't want mushy noodles, okay? So while that's in the water, let's get our shrimp marinating so that we can add some flavor to it, okay? So remember, we already added the cilantro in there, and now we're gonna add a little bit of oil as well as our curry paste, which is my favorite. So we're gonna use um, some oil. I'm just using uh, canola oil, which is a neutral oil. And- Hold on, the sorry. Yeah. Is your shrimp cooked? No, it's not. Oh, okay, it looks pink from here, so. It's, okay. it's, um, it's Argentinian shrimp. So it okay. has uh, that deeper pink color. Okay, um, So yes, the shrimp we are using is raw. Um, and if you did have cooked shrimp, you could use it. Um, it would just take less time because you want to reheat it and add the flavor to it. So you still could use cooked shrimp if you wanted to. Um, so we are going to add some oil to this. And the reason why I'm using a neutral oil is because I want the flavor of the curry paste to come through. So we don't need very much in here, just a tablespoon. That's going to go right into our shrimp. And then we're going to use our red curry paste. Okay, so Thai curry paste um, has lots of lemongrass, so that nice kind of lemony fresh flavor, ginger, and often is spicy. I don't think the amount we're using is spicy. I think it's just kind of a nice mild level. If you love spicy, you could easily double up the amount that we're using. We're only using a tablespoon tonight, okay? Um, and when you see red, green, or yellow, Curry paste, typically it's a Thai recipe um, that, that you're gonna be making as opposed to a mild or hot curry, um, which typically is, is an Indian dish. Not always, but kind of as a, as a general rule. So I'm adding my tablespoon. I just kind of, this jar is very tiny and hard to scoop out. So I just scooped out one tablespoon of red curry paste and that goes right onto our shrimp, okay? And then you're just gonna stir everything together to coat the shrimp nicely. And then I'm just gonna check on our noodles here as well. I'm gonna take one out to taste it. And I already have a colander in my sink. It's chewy. We don't want it chewy, we want it tender. So it needs a couple more minutes. All right, so I'm going to mix together my shrimp. Now, I tend to have 
gloves in my kitchen. You don't need gloves for this, but you can use just a spatula or a spoon. But this, you wanna make sure that the curry paste is on all of your shrimp, okay? Now, here's where, if you want it to look pretty, you leave the tails on the shrimp, um, or you can take them off, okay? Just make sure you tell your guests, because sometimes guests, you know, they don't realize that there's tails on the shrimp. <laughs> so it's kind of important to let them know that they're there. All right, and you can see how beautiful that, that red curry coats the shrimp really, really nicely and gives you that beautiful red color. So there's just enough of that mixture to coat the shrimp perfectly, okay? We don't want anything um, going to waste there. Now, we are going to check those noodles again. If your noodles are done, drain them, okay? I'm gonna check mine again. Oh, this is a long one. Okay, it's done. So I'm gonna go to the sink, drain my noodles, rinse them with cold water, and drain them again, okay? And then I will, I will come back with them in the pot, and we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of oil to them, just so that they don't kind of stick so much together. So in goes to the colander. Tracy, were there any other questions that had come in? I forgot yeah, to ask just, you that. And earlier. I'm also just checking. I think we've got, we gained some new cook along. Uh, we have a helper in Brenda's kitchen, I see, and we have helpers in Leslie's kitchen. And so that's great, even in Beth's kitchen. So that's great. Everyone looks good and they're all on track. We did oh, have awesome. a couple of questions. I'm going to move back just to the, the, the shredded um, cabbage really quickly. Somebody had a question yes. about whether or not, you know, it's shredded. Do you need to kind of re-rinse it? Often packaged lettuce or whatever kind of green will say that it's pre-washed. However, I think yes. if you want to, you can. But Emily, yes, what do you, you think? You totally can. Um, and just, you can read the bag. Um, and if you want to give it um, a rinse. But what I would say is, if you're going to do that, make sure you have your salad spinner. Um, close by so that you can spin it dry because we don't want to add water to the recipe because it dilutes the dressing. So you can definitely do that. Um, and that that really is it's it's a personal choice. So but I'm not against it. Just make sure that it doesn't have too much water um, sitting on it because then it dilutes the dressing and we really want the flavor of the dressing to come through. Absolutely. Can I ask you a couple more while you're drinking yeah, that? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so somebody just asked that they can use, of course, like you just mentioned, they have green curry paste. Yeah. This is the red. It's all so it's all personal preference. When we're when we're doing these recipes, um, it's all about the versatility. I mean, if you really like it spicy, you just add a lot more curry paste. Yes. Um, and and it is it's funny with the different curry paste, like I think that, like, I actually find the green curry paste a little bit spicier, just it's my palate yeah. to the red, and that can be the opposite for somebody else. So um, it's really, you know, trial and error sometimes. And so, and sometimes it's what's available. You might not find red, so you'll just have to pick up green or yellow. So, exactly. and that's okay. So it works out, it works out okay. The flavors I find are similar, they're not the same, um, but they definitely can be, I think, interchangeable. And I just wanted to comment on, you know, when Emily put the glove on to mix the, the shrimp, if you were just to use a spoon, the, the, the marinade, the dressing wouldn't really get on to the protein as nicely. And I will say, if you're going to use your hands, it's spicy. And if you've ever cut a chili pepper and then rubbed your eye, like I have, or taking your contact lens out, forgetting that it is excruciatingly hot in your eye. So sometimes using um, the, a, a glove is the way to go. And if you don't, and you want to use a spoon, that's fine, but it really got in there because you really want those flavors in there. Yes, yes. And I mean, so we should also talk about, I mean, we're using shrimp tonight, but you could use other things. Um, yes, that was another use. question. Yeah. So you could use, um, if you wanted to do a vegetarian version, um, you could totally use tofu here. That would be fabulous. You could also use other proteins. Um, you could use salmon would be lovely in this. 
You could also use chicken, um, some pork. So you could use, you know, a variety. If you had scallops, you could use those too. Um, and I would use kind of the larger scallops as opposed to the tiny little bay scallops because they can, they can kind of just, there's so many of them <laughs> just to control them, especially if you're skewering them um, to have the larger scallops. So this recipe is really nice because it kind of just plays into kind of whatever you have at home. So it doesn't have to be, you know, strictly shrimp. And I will say, however, if you are buying shrimp, look for shrimp when it's on sale and buy a couple bags um, because you can get, you know, three quarters to a three quarters of a pound to a pound for under $10. Um, so if it's on sale, sometimes you get it for six or $7 keep it in the freezer because it makes a really quick meal and it's a great protein. And I think you mentioned how much protein, didn't you? It, I did. I did. It basically, I'm going to find it right now again. <laughs> so, um, as I, I, didn't need to, I didn't need to put you on the spot. Trace. That's okay. That's okay. So, so for the serving is 21 grams, but for those of you who are used to coming on our cook with OC program, um, you know, Emily and I love to do recipes that you can freeze do leftovers and all of that. Now, this is not really one where you want to freeze it. However, we also talk a lot about if you can get a deal, if things are on sale. So like sometimes they have, you know, all the curries and the soy sauce and the noodles are on sale. You can pick them up. And to Emily's point about the frozen shrimp, pop it in the freezer whenever you're ready to make it. Same with the edamame. Am I pronouncing yes. that correctly? Edamame? Did I say that? Right? You're getting that. I think you're Sorry. just saying that. Yeah. No, I heard it and went, that's not right. It's not that I didn't know <laughs> what you were talking about. So that was perfect. I know. Um, <laughs> so but if you take a yeah, if you if you take a look at your noodles and they're really, really fun, wow, which are super fun to eat, by the way. Yes. Um, you can just take your scissors and cut them. Make sure that your scissors are clean. Make sure the kids did yeah, it. I'm gonna have Roy take me off because I want to see you do that. That was okay. fabulous. Um, so um these aren't the scissors that the kids use for cutting paper and stuff. These are my kitchen scissors that then get washed every time. So just, you know, you can kind of take a look and see if they're really, really long, you can give them a cut or you can just leave them long. It's super fun to have these like long slurpy noodles um, in the salad, which is, I always think, especially if you're, you know, if, if kids are around, they tend to, they tend to like that. Um, and I don't, I don't take offense to slurping noodles. I think it's fun. All right, so I think I cut most of them. I had already broken some up, so it shouldn't be too bad. There we go. And then what you can do, I added the two tablespoons of canola oil into our noodles. Um, so that's what's keeping them nice and loose. And you can add them into your vegetable bowl. Okay, so with all your vegetables, you can add those cooked noodles in there, just like that. This is a nice big bowl of goodness. I'm gonna leave my tongs in there. I'm move this big pot out of the way so that we can, I'm gonna put it here, there, I'm gonna put my shrimp here so we can make our dressing, okay? And then I promise you, we will cook that shrimp. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna put the shrimp in the broiler. Um, so if your broiler needs to heat up like mine, I'm gonna turn mine on so that it's ready to go. Um, but you don't have to do this in the broiler. This, if you, it was nice enough, nice enough outside, you could go and throw them on the grill. You could just saute them in a skillet if you wanted to. So there's lots of options um, on how to cook the, the shrimp as well, okay? Um, so don't feel, if you don't wanna do anything on the skewers, you don't have to. Um, if you are using the bamboo skewers, Get them in some water now so that they can sit in the water and soak up some water so we don't have any flames um, in the oven. Or if you have metal skewers, you can just leave those as is. Okay, I'm going to use metal skewers tonight because um, I happen to find four of them that I'm going to use. All right, so let's get our dressing together because that has lots of big flavor. Um, and we are going to start off with some cream. So it's a creamy dressing. And you can use five or 10% cream. If you only have coffee cream, table cream, it will work. It just adds a little bit of richness to it. So we're gonna measure out half a cup. So this is the bowl that had my garlic in it. Remember that garlic we minced? That's where our dressing is going, okay? So half a cup of our cream. So I'm just gonna measure it out in my liquid measure. 
Now, if you're thinking, can I use milk? Don't use milk. <laughs> um, you really want some body and that's why the cream comes out um, on top for this recipe, okay? So in goes my cream. And then I'm going to switch to a dry measuring cup to measure out my almond butter. So traditionally, some of these ingredients you'd find in a peanut sauce, but we're using almond butter. And this is um, natural almond butter. So you may need to give it a little stir. Sometimes the oil separates from the nut itself. And I'm gonna use a dry measuring cup for this. Okay, so I'm gonna measure out a third of a cup. This is actually one of my favorite snacks to have with apples, is almond butter and sliced apple. Tastes so yummy. All right. And I'm gonna get a little spatula and that's gonna go right in here as well. We are. And then we're going to add some lime. So that really is going to add a nice little kick of flavor. We're going to add zest and juice. So I'm going to use that little microplane that I showed you earlier to take off the zest. If you don't have a microplane, you can use a little grater or you can use a vegetable peeler and peel off some of the skin of the lime and then just chop it up really finely. Okay. We need about half a teaspoon. So, um, if your lime is pretty big, you might only need about half the lime. I have these really tiny limes tonight, so I might need most of it, okay? And what's great about this is that it's just taking off that top part, which has all the flavor. And what you should always do when you're zesting any citrus is make sure you give it a wash before you use it, okay? So it really, and you'll notice right away after you wash it, it'll smell bigger and brighter and absolutely wonderful. Okay. I think I need all of it. <laughs> and I'm going to get my measuring spoon here. Let's see. Perfect. I have my half a teaspoon in there. And I'll just give a little tap to the rest of it. And then what you can do is just roll your line and cut it. Now, if you have a little juicer, you can use your little juicer or you can just squeeze it. Okay. Um, I always, when it comes to limes, it's always a good idea to have a few extra around because <laughs> sometimes they can be a little dry. Um, so I always buy a couple extra to have on hand. I'm going to give this half. So we need three tablespoons of lime juice for our dressing. There. And then I already have some measured out here. I'm probably going to need all of it for. So I'll measure out three tablespoons. Here, one, and two, and three. So you want to use fresh lime because that has a natural sweetness as well as a little bit of tang, much like lemons. So oftentimes, I'm just grabbing a whisk because we need to whisk this up. Um, oftentimes you'll see Maybe you have some lemon or lime juice in a bottle in your refrigerator. It doesn't have the same flavor. It's a little bit more acidic. So by using the fresh, and because we need the lime zest anyway, it's definitely worth it to have that fresh lime juice, okay? So you're just gonna whisk it all together. And we have to add our seasoning. Because remember I talked about no salt, but we are using soy sauce. So we're gonna have three tablespoons of our soy sauce right in here. Now, if you wanted this dressing, by the way, is delicious just as a dip, outside of it being a salad dressing, you could just cook up the shrimp and dip the shrimp in this, great with chicken or salmon. So it has lots of options to it, okay? I always love having recipes that can be used for other things, not just the recipe itself. All right, so there's our salad dressing, ready to go. Okay. And then we are going to pour this over top of our noodles and veggies. So you get all that goodness 
in there. And then you can start popping that all together, okay? Or if you have a helper in the kitchen, that could be their job. And really what I want is to, I want this dressing to flavor the noodles and just have the veggies there as added crunch. There. I'm using my spatula to make sure I get it all. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this here because I'm going to skewer my so I have, because I'm using a broiler, it gets really hot. I've lined um, a baking sheet with some foil, okay? If you use parchment paper, it may catch fire. So let's avoid that and, um, and just uh, use the foil. So I'm going to skewer my shrimp. So you can, this, we're using a jumbo shrimp, which usually gives you 25, sometimes 30, 20 to 25 um, shrimp. So you, we're making this for four to six people. So depending on how many you have, um, you can divide the shrimp up accordingly. So I'm gonna do, see how far I get with five. And what I'm doing is kind of skewering the shrimp at two points so that there are little curves here, just like that. Actually, I'll do it this way so that they lie flat. And then leave a little bit of space in between them so that they cook evenly as well. And if you're doing this in a skillet where you're just going to saute them, you can just use a nonstick skillet and cook them over medium high heat. Okay. Um, if you're using a grill, you can again, medium high heat on your grill and just get some beautiful grill marks on them because they're only going to take about at most five minutes. Okay. I think I'm, should have done maybe four. This one might not have enough here. Hey, Emily. Got yes. A, let's do a couple questions. Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. So we had a, um, a couple of questions. We've already talked about a couple of substitutions. Yes. So let's just, as we always say, when we develop these recipes, they're always developed to keep in mind about how much protein, calcium, and other bone building nutrients there are per serving. So once you start swapping ingredients, you just need to be kind of aware of what that would mean. So for example, let's say you didn't include the edamame, you would lose some protein unless you were able to replace it. Um, if you wanted to take out, so somebody asked about the almond butter, if there's a nut allergy, obviously you don't want to use it. Um, what could somebody either A, replace it with, if anything, and you you know you're going to lose a little bit of the protein and the calcium from that. All I'm, you know, we also say is one meal isn't going to make or break it. So like if you don't have everything in this one, but you have to realize that, you know, if you have a full day or a full week, you just need to make the choices to kind of make up the nutrients. I'm just going to put this in the broiler. And no, then you go and do that because. I'm going to answer you. Maureen just said the sauce smells so good. Maureen is oh, making good. the sauce cooking along there. That's awesome. Um, so a couple things. Um, when it comes to substitutions, as Tracy said, we talked about, you know, the edamame using canned beans there because you're still going to get that, that protein in, which is fabulous. When it comes to nut butters, um, if you can have almonds, but you can have peanut butter, you could totally use that again in respect, um, keeping in mind everything Tracy said, but you can also use non-nut um, non butters, okay? So um, pea butter, you could use um, sunflower butter, you could use pumpkin seed butter. So keeping in mind that all the flavors are gonna change. Not to say that that's not a bad thing because they're all typically toasted before they're created into their, um, their, their nut or seed butters. Okay. So you have, you have some options there, which I think is really nice. Um, and then that will still give you the creaminess and the consistency with the flavor of it. Um, so that's kind of in the end, your goal is to have that nice kind of creamy, and this should really stick to the noodles. Okay. We're not looking to have, um, dressing at the bottom of the bowl. This is meant to kind of coat everything and cling to it um, because that's what we want the flavors to be. And because it does that, this is actually a great salad to leave in the fridge. 
because as it sits, the flavor intensifies a bit, okay? So you can actually have this um, and make it tonight and have it for lunch tomorrow or dinner tomorrow, and it will taste that much better because it's sat and has been included all together um, and mingled, if you will, with all of the other salad ingredients, okay? Does that make sense, I hope? I think it covers- Oh it yeah, covers. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we have another question just about the broiler of the broiling of the shrimp. So how far away from the element do you broil the shrimp? So um, usually I try to stay anywhere between four to six inches um, from the broiler. So this distance. Okay. Um, because again, it's not, it's not going to take that much time. Um, if it's too close, it's going to kind of burn and go too quickly. So it just leaving yourself enough space. And if you do them on the skewers, you can actually just turn this, like pull out the baking sheet and turn the skewers. Um, and within about five or six minutes, the shrimp is done. In a, in a skillet, if you were pan frying them in a skillet or on the grill, you put them directly on and then turn them kind of halfway. So about two and a half, three minutes, turn them and they'll be done in about five minutes. So it's that direct heat that cooks them a little bit quicker. Um, which is really good. And I have to say, just because I've done this, because the one day I was like, oh, I don't have any veggies, I'm not making this into a salad. I actually sauteed all the shrimp, added the dressing in there and made like a creamy shrimp sauce and just served it over noodles. And it was delicious hot. So these are things that if you like the flavors, that you can change it up and make it your own. So it doesn't have to be a cold salad with warm shrimp. It can actually be a hot shrimp dish that you put over the noodles and just enjoy it like that and maybe have the salad on the side or veggies on the side, which as Tracy mentioned earlier, completely changes the recipe. Um, but most of the components are still there. You just kind of break it up in a different way. So, and sometimes you want something hot as opposed to having, you know, the cold noodles. So I'm going to toast our almonds. If you've already toasted them, that's great. But this is just a fabulous way for any nut across the board to add a little bit more flavor and get a little bit of color. So we are using, I think it's a third cup. No, three tablespoons, a little. If you need a little bit more almonds, you totally can add them. Um, so if I was using peanut butter, I would use peanuts to kind of <clears throat> counteract it. If I was using pumpkin seed butter, I'd use pumpkin seeds. Um, so sunflower seeds, you could do the same thing. So kind of think of it that way, whatever um, nut or seed butter you're using, you can um, match it up with the nut or seed to go with it. And across the board, you can toast them. So I'm just heating up my little skillet here over medium heat, and I'm gonna add my almonds. And I, you can do them in the oven. We're only doing such a small amount. Doing them in front of your eyes <laughs> will make you keep an eye on them and less chance of you burning them. I will admit they've gone in the oven and I've forgotten about them until you smell them and then ugh, it's too late. So this way you can keep an eye on them. And if you forget to toast them, that's okay. Um, it just does add a nice little bit of extra flavor and a nice little crunch um, to the addition of the, the veggies, okay? I'm gonna check on my shrimp while I toss those a little bit. My broiler's down here, so I have to go down here. Were there any other questions, Tracy? Well, actually, while you're checking that, I'm just gonna check on all our cook-along participants who seem to be doing well. How's everyone doing? We're good, I have, you know, it's the universal sign of okay, the thumbs up. Yes, We're good. That is, that is yeah. great. Oh, and Maureen is showing us what's in her dish. That looks delicious. That's great. Everyone looks like they're 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 doing really well. Um, I did want to give a shout out though. Uh, so we have people in every province that are watching tonight, and also some friends in Australia, Pakistan, and Louisville, Kentucky, and oh, wow. most New Mexico. So hi to everyone. We're so happy that you joined us because uh, we've gone global. No, so. <laughs> That's perfect. Let me just see if there's another. Oh, the serving size is four. Uh, somebody just asked. It's four. Four servings. Um, this is also great if you hate having to, you know, cook every day. If you're putting this in the fridge and you go to work or you're going out, this is great in a takeaway. 
Oh, for sure. Like 100%. putting it in your reusable dishes and like packing it up and taking it. Perfect. So I'm actually going to start um, yes. plating some, Tracy, because I'm going to garnish just one plate of it. And you can do the same. If it's easier for you, if you know this is going into the fridge for tomorrow's lunch or dinner, um, you can add your garnishes right to the bowl. Um, or you can just set them aside and use them. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of my toasted almonds on there. And remember that cilantro that we cut up? I'm going to sprinkle some of that on top. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my shrimp because they are pretty much good to go. And I'm just going to put one skewer on top. So if you wanted to, um, what makes it look, you know, a little bit different is taking them off the skewer and putting them all on the plate. I don't mind having that skewer right on, especially um, because everything else is ready. You can just serve everybody a skewer and that's okay by me. I'm gonna grab my shrimp here. And you're looking for your shrimp to kind of curl up a little bit, get a little bit pink, okay? That's what they look like. And I'm gonna take this guy here and just put it right across, okay? So you can serve it pretty casual that way or if you want, I'm gonna just remember that if you're using metal skewers, they're off. Um, and you can just take them right off the skewer and then just place them all around so that every bite or two, you'll get that little bit of shrimp. And that's it. Thai satay noodle salad, done and done. That looks <laughs> delicious. Let's take a quick look at everyone and see, because I think some people were a little behind, some people were a little ahead. I see David, he is mixing his bowl and we've got Elkie and Friend, they're mixing They're mixing it up. And awesome. we have got her beautiful bowl and dish and Marion and Brenda, I always say it sounds like I'm doing the, you know, the, the magic window as we go in. I love it. Look at all the colors. Oh, look at so Tracy. Stylish. Tracy, you've got a whole group there. Hi, Tracy wow. and friends. Oh, look at theirs as well. We've got Rosie who's visiting us and Elkie and Beth. So this is, so just for those of you who've never experienced a cook-along before, this is really just like a community cook-along where we kind of do it all together. And if you have questions and then the rest of you who are uh, joining us and watching and learning at the same time. It's just we have a lot of regulars coming back and we love seeing everyone. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, what we're also going to have do, Emily do, because the last time we forgot to have Emily taste, people emailed me <laughs> saying Emily didn't taste the dish. Whoops, so baby. we're going to do I the apron and we're going to do the taste test. Does anyone have any other questions? Yeah, does anyone cook along? Do you guys have any questions? Are you good? I'm going to check. Oh, Christine Thomas, who's who's uh, vacationing right now in Florida, she's thanking both of us. That was so great. Um, and let's see. And I know someone was asking about your cheese grater, which. Um, oh, my cheese you, grater. Yeah. That's an Ikea cheese grater. <laughs> and Ikea is not a sponsor of this program. So, there you go. <laughs> so there you go. All right, let's see. Let's see. Emily's going to do the taste test. And while you do that, because it looks delicious. I'm going to share who the winner is. I'm checking my list right here. Um, You're getting all the crunch too, Tracy. Sorry. Oh, I like see, I love texture. I like a mix. So yes. I love those crunchy nuts and, and everything. That that just looks so delicious. Um, so congratulations to Kristen Martin of Surrey North in British Columbia. Congratulations. Northeast, Congrats. I'm sorry. Surrey Northeast in BC. You won an apron. So we are going to reach out to you and we're going to ship it to you. Yes, I love Emily with the long noodles. That is awesome. It's fun. Oh, we've got somebody vacationing in Panama. We love really? everyone who joins us, even when they're on vacation. So before we let everyone go, uh, let's just do one last. Let me just see here. Okay, your cook along, friends. We just want to say thank you. We're going to wrap it up in a minute. I hope you enjoy. We'll follow up in an email. And to all of us, all of you who watched, and uh, really quickly, for all our other recipes, so the, the sandwich we talked about, it's the carne asada, it's on there. We've even got other salads um, and other recipes. And this is just a sprinkling. There are way more at osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes. <laughs> and for the website, we have podcasts. All of this is just generally, you can get on, no charge. 
uh, great uh, podcasts on food and your mood. We have blogs on having osteoporosis and sleeping well. Uh, Dr. Andy Wong, uh, Andy Kinon Wong, he did a wonderful webinar on the origins of musculoskeletal pain. And that has been recorded. So you can find that on the OC replay page just by visiting the website. And we have another cooking demo coming up. That is on Tuesday, February 13th. And we are going to make a delicious egg and squash risotto. Delicious for one, delicious for four. So uh, it's got protein and calcium and veggies. It's another one pot dish, which we love. So we hope uh, if you're interested, you can get on osteoporosis.ca forward slash events and you can register. It's on the website. And lastly, we wanna thank again, thank you to the Winnipeg Foundation because they allow us to do programs like this when they provide us with funding. And thank you to our wonderful grocery delivery partner, Food Fair in Winnipeg. They're awesome. And of course, to Emily, because Emily is awesome too. And she uh, she does a fantastic job for us. And you all can find us on Instagram and Facebook. And also you can subscribe, just click the subscribe button. You will get all the information directly to your inbox um, for e-newsletters and other information. So to everyone who joined us, thank you so much. Bye everyone in Winnipeg. Bye, everyone Thanks. across the country. Thank you so much for everything, you guys. Oh, bye, Thank Luna. We'll see you the next one, hopefully. Bye, well, everyone. If I could figure out my camera, you would. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have Emily, a great you one of my bowls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Have a great one and happy cooking. Take care. Thank Keep you. well. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye Winnipeg. <laughs>